Hey everyone, in this video I am continuing on with my Brian Michael Bendis Daredevil coverage. The storylines in this volume are going to cover introducing us to Matt Murdock's new girlfriend, Mila Donovan. We're going to have the Owl trying to take over some territory. And then we're going to have the last few issues, which are so epic, so amazing, get hyped. They are some of the best Daredevil issues I've ever read. We're going to have Typhoid Mary in the mix. Bullseye, and Kingpin. And the final issue that I'm going to be covering in this video is one of the greatest issues I've ever read of Daredevil ever. It is so good. So epic. Oh my god. When I get to my final thoughts section, you are going to see me lose my mind. <laughs> All right, let's dive into it. Uh, part three of my Brian Michael Bendis Daredevil coverage. Daredevil by Brian Michael Bendis Part 3 with artwork by Alex Maleev. In this video, I will be breaking down issues 41 through 50, the lowlife and hardcore story arcs. Daredevil Volume 2, Issue 41, Lowlife Part 1 of 5. A blind woman named Mila Donovan is walking down the street with her friend Lori. After they walk and chat for a bit, they part ways. Lori has to go meet someone else. As Mila continues walking, she is in the middle of the street, and it seems like a truck is going to run her over. Lori notices this and yells for her friend to look out. Luckily for Mila though, Daredevil happened to be in the area, and he swung down and scooped Mila off the street saving her from the truck, although he sent the both of them crashing through a storefront window. Daredevil in the store is on top of Mila. He is trying to calm her down. He tells her, Ma'am, you have a cut on your arm, and this piece of glass is in your shoulder here. What I'm gonna do is... Daredevil stops talking for a second. He notices that Mila is touching his face. He asks her, Are you blind? Mila answers, Yes. Daredevil continues, Okay, well, uh, listen, you were almost hit by a truck. The cops stopped the truck three blocks from here, but he almost hit you. I grabbed you as fast as I could, but I couldn't stop us from going through a plate glass window. I'm going to have to pull this glass out of you, and you're going to have to put pressure on it until the ambulance comes. Mila's friend Lori is nearby. Daredevil tells her to phone 911. Daredevil then removes the glass from Mila's shoulder. She is going to be fine. Mila, who is blind and was just feeling Matt's face, asks, Why are you wearing a mask? She then kind of answers her own question, saying, Ah, she figured out that he was Daredevil from the mask. Matt tells her, All done, you're gonna be okay. Get to the hospital and have that wound tended to. Again, I'm sorry for the jarring break in your day. Matt heads off, and Mila, who is stunned, she can only muster a simple, Thank you. Later on, at the offices of Nelson and Murdoch, Matt has an appointment with a man named Wilbur Day. Wilbur Day is actually the villain known as Stiltman. When Wilbur sits down with Matt, Matt asks him, So, Mr. Day, what can I do for you? Matt pretends to not know that Wilbur Day is actually the villain Stiltman, and this makes Stiltman really annoyed. He sits there across Matt and says, you're going to sit there and pretend you don't know me? Matt plays dumb, asking, Have we met? Stiltman continues, Wilbur Day, I'm Stiltman. We've met 400 times. Matt, who is still in his hardcore denying he is Daredevil phase, answers, Stiltman, huh? Oh, you mean that burglar guy who wears stilts and robs things? Stiltman is still furious that Matt isn't acknowledging him properly. Matt denies he's Daredevil and says he is in the middle of a big lawsuit about it. He claims he has never met Stiltman before. Stiltman, frustrated, just moves on from this. He tells Matt, Look, I didn't come here to get into this with you. I came here to tell you that you've won. I quit. In this case, is my Stiltman armor. I'm giving it to you. I'm leaving town and never coming back. You've won. You've all won! Matt asks, what am I supposed to do with this exactly? Stiltman answers, why don't you give it to your old pal, Daredevil? Alright, okay, so let me ask you. The newspaper says you're Daredevil. Do you wonder why someone hasn't 
tried to kill you? Why haven't me or one of your other villains blown this building up? Do you know why? Because they're scared to death of you. I can admit it to you now because I'm done, I'm out. I'm sick of waking up in the middle of the night, covered in a cold sweat, scared of you, the man without fear. You know, some of my peers, it's hilarious to listen to them talk about you, especially lately. All they talk about is how they are laying low until the spotlight on you dies, until they figure out what your new angle is. But really, I know they are pathologically scared to death of you. And there's only one other person who they were that scared of. Wilson Fisk, the Kingpin. But the reason I'm leaving town is that a few months ago, Vanessa Fisk was having a going out of business sale and offered me a piece of the Fisk pie, a cash buy-in. So I came up with a little bank and I get a little organized territory for myself. Territory that used to belong to the Kingpin, all with the guarantee that the others who buy into it will leave the other territories alone. So I bought in, I sunk every dime I had into it. But what no one told any of us is that there was one person she flat out denied, refused to sell to. An old buddy of yours as well. The Owl, Leland Owlsley. Remember that crazy mutant shithead? She told him to drop dead and took all of our money and left. She told him to go to hell. So guess what he did to all of us the second she left town? That's right, he took over. And now I'm out of money. I got a girlfriend in the hospital with a broken back and I got a broken arm. Ah, I'm leaving. The owl, the kingpin, you and your stupid shit. You're all insane and I'm leaving. As Stiltman rants and raves, Melvin Potter enters the office. Melvin Potter used to be the villain Gladiator, but he is now reformed and is working as a bodyguard for Matt. Melvin ushers Stiltman out of his office. Stiltman continues yelling at Matt as he leaves, but Matt tells him, Wilbur, I wish you luck in all your future endeavors, but you clearly have me confused with somebody else. So it seems like with Kingpin and Vanessa Fisk leaving New York City, they sold their various business empire to many different criminals, but in the end, the Owl is the one that took over. He kind of pushed the others out. The Owl seems to be running most New York crime now. Later that night, Matt, as Daredevil, decides to do some investigating into the Owl. He is questioning some thugs in many of the various sketchy parts of town. He is trying to get the Owl's location. Daredevil ended up finding a whole bunch of the Owl's thugs that recently pulled some jobs. Daredevil beat them up, and then with the last of the Owl's men, he held the guy over a rooftop, and he told him to give a message to his boss. The message was, got your last. Daredevil then burned all of their ill-gotten money from that night. Later on, at the Owl's warehouse, he is getting a report from his men about what transpired that night, how Daredevil was questioning them. He beat them up. He stole their money and burned it. And he gave a message. The message was, gotcha last. The Owl is furious. He yells at the man delivering this news. The Owl then turns to his advisor slash legal counsel slash henchman Cecil Anod. Cecil used to work for the Kingpin and now works for the Owl. The Owl tells Cecil Anod, Damn it, Anod! You told me with this tabloid thing hanging over Murdoch's head, he would leave us alone, that he couldn't risk the fight. Well, guess what? He's the craziest, and he has no fear, Anod! No fear! I'm gonna go right over there to his office and snap his neck, once and for all! Cecil Anod tries to calm the Owl down. He tells him Leland, I told you, if you try and do anything to Murdoch, you will get caught. With your track record? Come on. He's not some anonymous schmo anymore. We can rough up for lunch money. The media is all over him, waiting for someone just like you to try something like that. Plus, Murdoch's too connected. He's too connected to the legal system, and he's too connected to those costumed retards. The only way to win is to be smarter than him. This night was a learning experience. It's one night out of a thousand. And he said, got you last? What is he, five years old? Ignore him. You want to piss him off? Ignore him. For now, we try to figure out an angle, okay? 
The owl listens to Cecil, but he still needs to get some of his frustration out, so he kills one of his henchmen, the guy that delivered the news on what happened this night. Cecil is a little taken aback by the owl's rage, but he says, Well, okay then. Elsewhere, we see Mila Donovan. She awakes in the middle of the night. She was the blind woman that Daredevil saved earlier. She gets up and she goes over to her apartment window. She remembers the sensation, the feeling she had when she touched Daredevil's face earlier when he saved her. She murmurs to herself, Daredevil. Mila's got a little bit of a crush on the man without fear. Daredevil Volume 2, Issue 42, Low Life, Part 2 of 5. Mila Donovan is on a rooftop with her friend, Lori. They are talking about Mila's encounter with Daredevil the day before. Mila asks Lori if she got a good look at Daredevil. Lori answers, well, you couldn't see the top half of his face because he was wearing this devil mask. You couldn't see his eyes. I mean, no one could, but... From what you could see, his lips, his chin, his bod, he's beautiful. Mila questions, really? Lori continues, swear to God, best tush I've ever seen. Oh my God, do you have a thing for Daredevil? Mila is a little bit embarrassed, but she kind of does. Lori asks, you want to see him again, don't you? Mila admits that she does. Lori thinks on it and says, you know, you know. The newspaper says that they know who he really is. He's a blind lawyer right here in Hell's Kitchen. His name is uh, Matt Murdock. He's suing the tabloids, this blind lawyer, because he says it isn't true, but... You know, you were really close to him. You touched him, right? If you got close to him again, would you be able to recognize his voice? Mila thinks that maybe she could. They then decide to look him up on the internet. Later that night, outside of a nightclub, two men and a scantily clad woman are in the back of a limo. The men are negotiating a drug deal for something called MGH, Mutant Growth Hormone. The drug dealer's hyping up this drug, saying, Look, this thing, you start living your life to peak genetic performance. You get to be the next step in your evolution. You know, without all the headaches. This is cutting edge. This is the precipice. You sitting down? This is from Spider-Man. The potential buyer asks, from the Spider-Man? How did you extract growth hormone off Spider-Man? The drug dealer answers, I didn't, but someone much more powerful than all of us put together did. The scantily clad woman in the car asks, you're saying if I take this, I can be Spider-Man? The drug dealer replies, no, Spider-Man is Spider-Man, but you'll be a better version of you, which baby is something I'd like to see. The potential buyer talks to his girl and says, Man, Spider-Man! The potential buyer tells the drug dealer he wants to buy some. Let's get down to a deal. Before they can finish their drug deal, though, Daredevil arrives and he flips the limo over. He pulls the scantily clad woman out of the limo and tells her, Go home and change your life. He then pulls out to the potential drug buyer and tells him, You, you go home to your wife and baby. Daredevil then talks to the drug dealer and tells him, And you. Where is the owl? Where is he right now? The drug dealer answers, He's at the old fisherman's market, the old warehouse. He's setting up shop there. Setting up shop. Across town at the owl's warehouse. The owl is talking to his advisor, Cecil Anod. The owl receives word that Daredevil is on his way. He will be here momentarily. The owl, he starts getting angry. He says, I'm going to bite his face off. I'm going to... Cecil calms the owl down. He tells the owl not to say anything. He has a plan underway. Daredevil arrives at the warehouse and he smashes in through a window. He then heads straight for the owl. He grabs the owl and is holding him in his arms. He asks him, How long did you think I was going to let this go on, Leland? Making a play for the Kingpin's territory? With some junk street drug? Cecil Anod then tries to do his plan. He keeps referring to Daredevil as Matt Murdock. He says, I'm sorry, Mr. Murdock, but you are trespassing on private property. My client, 
Daredevil responds, your client. Cecil continues, Mr. Murdoch, you simply cannot break into a person's private dwelling and make unfounded accusations. I'd also like to point out that Wilson Fisk was never convicted of any wrongdoing in any... Daredevil throws his billy club at a video camera that is recording them in the room. Daredevil then asks, You're taping me? Did you think catching me on tape would do what? Blackmail me? Would you leak it to the media? What's the plan exactly? Cecil responds, What you're doing here now is illegal. Breaking and entering, threatening people with unfounded accusations. It's illegal. And if we see you around here anymore, we're going to have to call the police and press charges. Cecil Anod then tries to phone the police. Daredevil grabs a hold of him. He finds a tape recorder in Anod's jacket pocket. Daredevil removes it. Cecil tells Daredevil, Mr. Murdoch, you're upsetting my client and I think you should leave. Daredevil responds, You keep calling me Murdoch, you clearly have me mistaken for somebody else. Daredevil leaves and takes the recorder with him. Cecil yells, hey, that recorder costs money. Daredevil, as he's leaving, says, bill your client. Elsewhere, we jump over to Yuri Rosenthal, the owner of the Daily Globe newspaper that is currently in a lawsuit with Matt Murdock over being Daredevil. Yuri is talking to one of his attorneys, Mr. Ingersoll. They are discussing the case. Ingersoll advises that settling would probably be the best option right now, although he understands the impulse to fight Murdoch with everything they have. Worst case scenario though, if they lose this could go really badly. Ingersoll warns that Matt Murdoch could literally end up owning the newspaper. Think of it, Yuri's children would end up working for him. Mr. Rosenthal tells his lawyer, let me think about it, leave. Back at the law offices of Nelson and Murdoch, Matt has a meeting with a potential new client. That potential new client is Mila Donovan. Matt is a little surprised that she is here. He asks her, uh, I'm sorry, have we met? Mila answers, yes, you saved my life. Matt tells her, uh, you must have me mistaken for someone else. There is a Small silence between them. Mila touches the side of Matt's face, just like she did when he saved her last issue. She tells him, I just wanted to speak with you again. Their silence continues. But it seems like there is some mutual attraction here from both sides. Back over to Yuri Rosenthal's house, the owner of the Daily Globe. He is swimming in his pool. As he is swimming, he notices someone mysterious poolside. He says hello. Later, it is revealed that Yuri Rosenthal has been killed. He has been beheaded, and his head floats away from the rest of his body in the pool. Daredevil, issue 43, Low Life, part 3 of 5. The police are at Yuri Rosenthal's home. They are investigating his death. Not only was Yuri Rosenthal decapitated, his head was actually ripped off his body. Not cut, ripped. They question Mr. Ingersoll, who was the last person to speak with Rosenthal. The lawyer, Ingersoll, tells the police that they were discussing the Murdoch case a few hours ago. Over at the law offices of Nelson and Murdoch, Matt is in the room speaking with Mila Donovan. Matt is silently taking in all of Mila's features. She smells so good to Matt. The strawberry in her hair, the jasmine on her skin, the vanilla on her feet. Even her heartbeat is elegant. She's nervous, embarrassed, but her posture doesn't give that away. Matt's heightened senses Help him paint a picture of her. Feel her form, her silky shiny hair, her precious pale skin. Mila is a little bit flustered. She tells Matt, This is hard to say out loud. The whole situation, it had an effect on me that I can't describe. I can't describe to you why I came down here. I've 
never done anything like this before, and I certainly have never spoken to someone, someone I don't know like this before. In fact, even with you pretending that it wasn't you as Daredevil who saved my life, this is as intimate a conversation I've had with a man since college. I just needed to speak with you again. Thank you for saving my life. Mila is starting to feel a little bit embarrassed and is going to go, but Matt stops her and talks with her further. He asks her what she does for a living. Mila explains she works at the Hell's Kitchen Housing Commission. She finds poor people places to live. Matt, he denies once again that he is Daredevil. He tells her, Mila, do you see a logic in that even if, let's say I had been the one that saved you, Let's say it was me that tossed you into that clothing store. Do you see how I wouldn't be able to tell you that? Do you see how admitting something like that could be very dangerous for me and for you? Matt is kind of, in a way, admitting that he probably is Daredevil, but he can never actually admit that to her outright. Mila asks him, Do you eat food? Would you like to have dinner with me tonight? Matt says he can't possibly take responsibility for the dangers involved if the two of them went on a date? Mila responds, I'm a big girl. I don't live in fear. It's funny how you immediately took my responsibility on yourself. But I guess that's a topic we could talk about over dinner. Matt, he is really enthralled by her. He tells her, can I think about it? Mila answers, sure, but just for the record, I never mentioned anything about a clothing store. She kind of tripped Matt out. Only Daredevil would know if it was a clothing store that they were in. As Mila leaves, she opens the door to Matt's office, and Foggy Nelson and Jessica Jones were eavesdropping at the door. As Mila leaves Matt, he is contemplating if he should go on this date. Foggy, seeing the wheels turning in Matt's head, tells him no. Matt responds to Foggy, okay, but wow, wow. Matt asks Jessica Jones if she can run a background check on Mila. Foggy can't believe this. Matt is actually going to consider going on a date with this girl? With everything going on in his life right now? Matt and Foggy talk further. The topic of conversation changes to the owl and his peddling of this mutant growth hormone around the city. Matt explains all about his last confrontation and how the owl was trying to record him and potentially blackmail him. Matt, he really wants this mutant growth hormone off the street, but he feels like he can't deal with this himself right now as he has too much going on, and there are too many eyes on him at the moment. Foggy says they should tip off the FBI. Matt to this responds, the FBI? Well, maybe in five years they'll have enough surveillance data to arrest the owl for a left turn in a carpool lane. But I want this drug off the street today, not in five years, today. Matt decides he's going to ask some of his superhero pals to maybe look into this. Perhaps Luke Cage would be of help. Jessica Jones returns to Matt. She already finished the background check on Mila Donovan. She tells Matt, no criminal record, no military record. It was easy. Although, you'll be buying the dinners if you go out with her. She makes less money than I do, and I don't make shit. Matt tracks Luke Cage down and meets him at his apartment. Luke Cage is not happy to see Matt. In fact, he's giving Matt some attitude. He's been avoiding talking to him lately. Matt asks if Luke is angry with him about the whole white tiger situation. Luke Cage answers, Nah, man. That went down the way it went down. You've done everything you could. Then Matt asks, Well, then what is it? Luke Cage tells Matt, What is it? You turned into a low-life piece of garbage. That's what it is. Luke Cage's own secret identity is public information. He is a known hero to the world. Luke Cage doesn't like how Matt is doing this whole deny, deny, deny thing about being Daredevil. He's tired of Matt being a liar. He should just admit who he is because he's an inspiration to handicapped people everywhere and he's got nothing to be ashamed of. He tells Matt to stand for something more than just a pair of tights. Matt, he starts getting a little bit angry and he defends himself. He says, My dad, my, my dumb palooka of a father who, truth be told, could barely read. He wanted me to be a lawyer. He might have died to make sure that that happened. And now, I am one. I stand in a courtroom and I make an argument and I serve the system. And you're saying 
I should give up the dreams of my father because some down on his luck fed I don't even know sells me out to a tabloid? I should lose my license to practice law and chance jail time? I should have to give up my life? Become a David Letterman punchline? You think I like this? I hate this! You think I went to bed one night and said, Please, Lord, let me drown in a sea of compromise so thick and convoluted I don't even know what the right thing to do anymore is? And you call me names? Big talk, Luke. It was your choice to go public. Your choice, Mr. Unbreakable Skin. Mr. Hero for Hire who never leaves his neighborhood. Luke, after listening to this, responds, Yeah, well, guess we have a, what do they call it? A difference of opinion. The topic of conversation then turns to why Matt originally came here. He talks about how the owl is out there peddling this mutant growth hormone. Matt wants Luke's help to get him off the streets. Cage tells Matt he should let the authorities take care of it. Well, Luke Cage is not going to help Matt on this issue. Matt, he decides to dress up as Daredevil and go and beat up some thugs. He takes a few low-level thugs down and tells them to change their life. But Matt feels this is a waste of time. It's not enough. He's not going to get results by doing this. Later on, Matt goes to the apartment of Mila Donovan. He buzzes down for her. Mila is a little surprised that Matt is here. Matt admits, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing here. Mila invites him inside. Elsewhere, at the offices of Nelson and Murdoch, Foggy Nelson is there with one of their interns named Crow. The doorbell to their offices rings. Foggy opens the door and it is the police. They are here to investigate the murder of Yuri Rosenthal, and they have a warrant to search the offices here. Daredevil Issue 44, Low Life Part 4 of 5. Matt Murdock and Mila Donovan are walking the streets of Hell's Kitchen. They are talking about the history of this neighborhood. As they are walking, they eventually make their way to Matt's law office. Outside the law office are many police officers. When they see Matt, they tell him they have a search warrant and they want to ask him some questions. Matt and Mila's date ends in a kind of embarrassing fashion. The police also hound Mila a bit, questioning where she was earlier today. Eventually, Matt agrees to go to the police station and answer the police officer's questions. When they are at the police precinct, Matt Murdock is in the interrogation room. With his heightened senses, he can hear the police officers talking about him through the one-way mirror. He hears about how they questioned Mila, and some things they have found out about him, and some of their strategies they're going to use when they interrogate him. While Matt is waiting for his questioning, Foggy visits him. Foggy offers to be his counsel when the cops question him, but Matt says he's capable of talking to them himself. He tells Foggy to wait for him outside, though, until he is released, so that Foggy can take him home. The detectives finally enter the interrogation room. They tell Matt that they finished searching his office and his residence. And you know what they found? A whole lot of nothing. Too much nothing. It's the kind of nothing that used to be something. The truth of the matter is, when Matt's identity was first revealed by the tabloid newspaper, he immediately on that day did a full clean sweep of his apartment and his offices, removing any connections of him being Daredevil. The cops question Matt a bit on his potential involvement in the murder of Yuri Rosenthal. They ask him, where were you this morning between the hours of 9am and noon? Matt answers, I was picked up at my home at 9.15 a.m., as I am every day, by my bodyguard Jessica Jones, and we walked five blocks to my office. The cops ask, You have a bodyguard? Tough guy like you? Matt answers, As you are both well aware, there is a misrepresentation out there that I am a superhero of some sort. The detectives badger him a bit, saying, No, you a superhero? It's with super strength? How'd you get your powers? Matt tells them, Detectives, I have come here of my own free will, and I am trying desperately to help you in your investigation. 
even though coming here has caused me an immense amount of personal and professional embarrassment. One of the cops yells, What kind of powers you have, daredevil? Eventually, the detective's boss comes in. A woman named Captain Mannheim. She ends this interrogation. She tells Matt he is free to go and she apologizes for his treatment at these officers here. The detectives try to argue with their captain, but she tells them to shut up. As Matt leaves the police precinct, the media is waiting outside, and they snap his picture and hound him with questions. Elsewhere, at the Owl's warehouse, he sees a recent copy of the Daily Bugle, about how Yuri Rosenthal was killed and how Matt Murdock is a suspect. Cecil Anod asks the Owl, did you have anything to do with this? Was the Owl responsible for the death of Yuri Rosenthal? The Owl just answers coyly, maybe. Cecil Anod questions, maybe. Did you have anything to do with this or not? The Owl does not directly answer. He just tells Anod, this is a dream come true. I literally dream of things like this happening to Murdoch. And with this headline in the papers, Murdoch is out of our hair for good. He's done. Daredevil is done. Get the word out on the street. The Kingpin's old crew. Tell them we took care of Murdoch. Daredevil issue 45, Low Life part 5 of 5. At Allenwood Federal Prison in Pennsylvania, Sammy Silk Jr. is doing time, although he is at this federal prison where hopefully the feds can keep him safe. Sammy is on the yard playing cards with some of the other inmates. He is telling them all that he is the one that took the kingpin down, and he was the one that found out Daredevil's secret identity and told it to the world. He explains how he got all of the other Kingpin's capos to turn on him. But he says, you know, he blew it. He did it wrong. He should have gone to his dad with it. He should have played the game. He should have gone to the families and let them take care of Kingpin through the proper channels. Kingpin would have been gone in that case, and it would have been historic. He says, they would have been making movies about me. Scorsese and De Niro would be following me around right now. I would have been... Instead, what I done is I got so horny for the kingpin, I got so, what's the word, tunnel vision. Now all I got was credit for the kingpin kill. The other inmates tell him kingpin ain't dead. Yeah, Wilson Fisk ain't dead. Sammy replies, well, he might as well be. The guy's gone. He's out of the picture. He's blind and in a coma. And now everybody is making money but me. His territory is wide open. One of the guards comes over to Sammy and tells him that he has a visitor. His father is here to talk to him. Sammy is escorted by the guard to a visitor room. Sammy's a little suspicious, though. He enters the visiting room, and the door is shut behind him. Inside is the Kingpin, Wilson Fisk, alive and well. His vision looks better, too. His eyes look all clear. Perhaps he's no longer blind. Kingpin tells Sammy, Thank you for crying. We then leave these two for now. We will learn Sammy Silk's fate in a bit. We now jump over to Matt Murdock. Matt is lying low in a hotel. He is trying to avoid the press that are hounding him ever since he got questioned yesterday in the murder of Yuri Rosenthal. Matt phones Mila Donovan's answering machine. He apologizes for the night before and how their date did not end ideally how he would have liked. He says he would love to see her again when this all dies down. If she wants, she can give him a call. He won't be home for a while, but he will get any messages she leaves for him. Foggy and Matt then talk further. They discuss who may be responsible for the death of Yuri Rosenthal. Foggy poses the question, who benefits the most from having Matt sit out? Matt, he comes to the conclusion, the Owl. The Owl is making his moves while I sit in here. Foggy, if the Owl did this, if he murdered that man just to screw with me? Matt can't stand for this. He gets dressed as Daredevil and leaves. Over at the Owl's warehouse hideout, 
One of the owl's doctors is scraping his body for some DNA. Apparently, this mutant growth hormone that they were selling on the street as drugs came from the owl himself. The owl does not like having his DNA scraped. He lets out an angry grrrr. You promised me that yesterday's DNA scrape would be the last one. I don't like doing the scrape. As they are arguing, the FBI swarm the building, led by Agent Harold Driver. Harold gets on a megaphone and says, Hello, Mr. Owl. We have a warrant. Don't do anything characteristically stupid. The Owl, along with his advisor, Cecil Anod, go down to talk with Harold. Harold explains, Seems like a known associate of yours, Riley Jenkins, has gone missing. And this was the last place anyone saw him. Word is, Jenkins, a drug-dealing scumbag with a bag of your drug money, got roughed up by a guy in a devil outfit. Drug-dealing scumbag then walks into this club. But drug-dealing scumbag didn't walk out. Cecil Lanaud tells Harold, You can direct your questions to me. I am Mr. Owlsley's legal counsel. Harold, who knows that Cecil used to work for the Kingpin, replies, That's so sad. All the Kingpin's men couldn't put a decent Kingpin back together again. And this is what you end up with? The Owl? How far down the supervillain food chain did you get before you called this guy? Harold also tells Cecil, Oh hey, by the way, an old friend of yours, Sammy Silk? He died in prison this morning. Someone crushed his head like a melon. So raise your hand if you're looking to cooperate with our investigations in exchange for federal protection. So it appears the Kingpin did in fact kill Sammy Silk, crushing his head like a melon. Cecil Lanaud answers Harold, Wait, wasn't Silk under your protection? Harold replies, Yes. Yes, he was. Cecil questions, Doesn't sound like a hot deal then, does it? Harold replies, <laughs> Yeah, well, then I guess you're screwed both ways from Sunday, ain't ya? The owl is not looking to go down. He yells, Screw you! He hits Harold the driver. Harold falls down. The owl starts running. He tries to escape, but then Daredevil shows up. Daredevil subdues the owl with a vicious beating. Harold Driver eventually walks over to Daredevil and the subdued owl. Daredevil tells Harold, I apologize for interrupting your investigation. I just wanted to keep this drug off of the street. Am I under arrest? Harold tells Daredevil, You're not even here. Daredevil replies, Thank you, and he heads off. As Daredevil is further away, he hears some of the FBI agents talking, and they discuss how the Kingpin is back. Daredevil, Issue 46, Hardcore, Part 1 of 5. We see a woman known as Mary Walker. She is the villain known as Typhoid Mary, or Bloody Mary. Currently, she has a job working on a soap opera. After her soap opera shoot ends for the day, she goes to her dressing room. And in her dressing room is the Kingpin waiting for her. Before I go further, let me give a little background information on Typhoid Mary. Typhoid Mary first appeared in Daredevil 254 in 1988. She is very mentally ill and suffers from Dissociative Identity Disorder. She has three abnormal personalities in addition to her seemingly healthy one. Her Mary personality is a timid, quiet pacifist. Her Typhoid personality is adventurous, lustful, and violent. Her Bloody Mary persona is brutal, sadistic, and she also hates men. Mary's fourth personality is lost and has not been mentioned since. Mary has a highly developed martial art skill. She also possesses telekinetic powers and pyrokinesis, the ability to set people or objects in her immediate vicinity on fire. Mary often works as an enforcer for the Kingpin. 
Recently, she underwent some sort of psychological treatment that have managed to keep her multiple personalities at bay and keep her in her normal, healthy, merry persona. And this has allowed her to live a life and work on this soap opera TV show. However, now that the Kingpin requires some use of Mary, he will put an end to this psychological barrier that was put up. In Mary's dressing room, the Kingpin greets her. Mary, she does not recognize the Kingpin. She thinks that maybe he's a journalist. She asks him, have we met? Kingpin answers, we've met. She asks, was it at the Soap Opera Digest Awards? That night was a total blur. Kingpin, he finds this fascinating. Mary is confused about what he is talking about. The Kingpin says, Let's talk about hypnosis, Mary. It's my understanding that they are using hypnosis now for any number of psychological predicaments, not the least of which is managing multiple personality disorder. If one, let's say, were to have a severe case, if they had a separate personality that is so unmanageable, so violent, a personality that took on a life of its own and whose actions could not be controlled, I understand hypnosis can really help a person like that find their way back to a normal life. I've been reading a lot on the subject. On reading this subject, I found that many doctors believe that cracking that barrier is a simple case of shocking the system. Kingpin smacks Mary. Mary falls down to the ground. This smacking of Mary seemed to be enough to shock her system and bring the typhoid Mary persona back to the forefront. Kingpin asks her on the ground, Mary? And Mary replies, Mary. Typhoid Mary is back. Kingpin says to her, Mary darling, I've missed you so much, so very much. Typhoid Mary responds, quite contrary, said Mary Mary. Elsewhere, over to the offices where Mila Donovan works, she is listening to the radio and they are reporting on Daredevil. They report on eyewitness accounts that claim to have seen Daredevil helping out to the FBI on a raid on the villain known as the Owl. The raid abruptly turned violent, the Owl attempted to escape, and it led to a face-to-face -face fight between Daredevil and the Owl in the middle of the street. The reporting also discusses how Matt Murdock and an unidentified woman, which is Mila Donovan herself, were apprehended by the police and brought in for questioning on the murder of Yuri Rosenthal. The reporting ends by saying it is not clear as of yet if Matt Murdock was still in police custody when the Daredevil-related street fight took place. As Mila is listening to this, her friend Lori enters the room. Lori comments, Wow, your boyfriend had a busy night. Mila tells her friend Lori, This is what he did last night after our date. After the cops picked us up and brought us in separately for questioning for a murder, after he called me to apologize, after all of that, he went off and dressed like a devil man and beat the crap out of someone? He did all this last night! Lori gives Mila some flowers that Matt sent her. It has a braille note in the flowers. Lori tells Mila, Mila, what did you think was going to happen? You knew who you were going to be dating when you approached him. Mila admits this is true, but this is too much. I mean, this was just their first date, and now her name is in the newspaper? Lori kind of joking says, you ask me, this is the best first date I ever heard of. Look, did he kill the guy the cops asked about? Mila says, no. So Lori continues, so okay then. Okay, let's go over it. He's totally Robert Redford when he was young. He's built, he's rich, he's successful, he's vaguely famous, he's clearly ambitious. I'm saying maybe we're setting our sights a little high here. This guy is a major catch. Mila still doesn't know what to think about all of this. Lori tells her, Listen, it's not like he wears that costume as a part of some sort of Dungeons and Dragons tournament. He's out there being proactive or something in the community. He's just beating the crap out of drug dealers. Good! Mila thinks about all of this some more. We jump way over to Bolivia. We see Waldo Dini 
the Kingpin's old consigliere. He is lying low. He is living in a run-down kind of shack. After all of his efforts to hide, though, the Kingpin still found him. Kingpin wakes Waldo up and tells him, I give you credit for running as far away from me as you possibly could. I almost gave up on ever finding you. The Kingpin starts loading a gun that Waldo had in his home there. Kingpin asks Waldo, Tell me, my trusted friend, my consigliere, is this the gun that my wife killed my only son with? Well, you stood there and watched? Waldo sits up in his bed and takes a drink of some alcohol. He tells Kingpin, Wilson, I didn't take one dime of your money. Your wife killed your son. Vanessa did it, not me. I did what I promised you I would. I did your words. I did everything in my power to give Vanessa whatever she needed. Kingpin interrupts saying, And do you really think that it was my wish for you to conspire to destroy my empire and to murder my son? Waldo asks, Then I take it Vanessa is no longer with us? Waldo assumes that Kingpin killed his wife for betraying his wishes. Kingpin answers, Ah, my sweet darling Vanessa has disappeared more competently than you. I half expected to see her here with you, but she's gone with all my money. I woke up out of a coma in a hospital in the mountains of Jabal Katrina, surrounded by dozens of people who didn't speak English, who didn't know who I am, who never heard of me. So I sat in my hospital bed to cut off from the world. All they knew was a woman gave them a great deal of cash to watch over me. I have no money, no home, I have no son, no wife, and my business connections have either run away or run to the FBI. Even my great trump card, Daredevil's real name, has no value anymore. I see now that I've grown soft, I'd grown flaccid. I made myself ripe for such an ousting, and I have learned from it. But try as I might, I can't imagine the series of events that led you to believe that helping my wife kill my own son and then broker the destruction of my empire was the right thing to do. Waldo responds to the Kingpin, Well, knowing as we both do that this is probably the last conversation we will ever have, why don't you think about what kind of man you are if your own son conspires to have you killed, while the only woman you have ever loved would rather destroy your empire? steal all your money, and leave you to bleed to death in some foreign country, then be with you. The Kingpin then shoots and kills Waldo Dini. Back over to the law offices of Nelson and Murdoch, Foggy tells Matt that he is being sued by Fred Myers, better known as Boomerang. He's suing you for a million bucks. Says that you dressed up in a devil costume and beat the crap out of him. Allegedly. Matt to this says, Did it mention anything about him trying to assassinate me on a contract that the Kingpin put on my life? That he tried to actually kill me with a boomerang? No, it does not mention that. Matt is soon visited in his office by Mila Donovan. Despite all the craziness that happened on their first date, she wants to see Matt again. The two of them leave to go to lunch. They are going to a Thai restaurant. Matt Murdock's bodyguard, Jessica Jones, is escorting them. As they are walking, they get interrupted by Typhoid Mary, dressed in her full villain gear. Mary tells Matt, Hi Matt, it's me, Mary. Matthew, there's something I've been meaning to tell you for quite some time. Burn! Typhoid Mary uses her pyrokinesis powers and lights Matt Murdock aflame. Daredevil issue 47, Hardcore part 2 of 5. We jump back two days before Typhoid Mary made Matt Murdock go up in flames. We meet a drug dealer named Samuel. He used to work for the Kingpin and then when Kingpin left, he worked for the Owl, and now the Owl's in jail, so things are kind of in disarray. Samuel runs a small crew that usually deals in mutant growth hormone, 
His crew was out of supply, so he went back to the supplier to get some more. Only when he arrived, he sees they were all brutally killed, and this freaked him out. He ran outside. Eventually, Samuel met some Yakuza, ran by a man named Sano Ori. Sano's crew are the ones that just brutally killed all of those people. Sano has a sword and has captured Samuel. Samuel asks the man, Do you know who I work for? Do you know whose territory this is? Sano Ori answers, We know exactly who this territory was, but let me ask you, are you expecting the owl to break out of federal custody with his many broken bones to come save you right now? Just as this Yakuza is prepared to kill Samuel, Typhoid Mary shows up. She starts humming a tune. The Yakuza, they start firing on her. Mary's able to deflect their bullets with her sword. She then starts slicing through all of the Yakuza members until only Sano Ori is left. She stabs him in the gut and he falls on the street. With everyone wiped out, the Kingpin walks over. He is standing over Sano Ori. Typhoid Mary asks, Can I make him burn? Kingpin responds, No, sweetie. He has a job to do. Kingpin talks to Sano and tells him, Hey, Lackey, I want you to tell your master to stay in Philadelphia, or I will kill his daughter. Sano takes in the message, and then he leaves. The original drug dealer, Samuel, he was just saved by the Kingpin, and he thanks him. He says, Thank God you're back, Mr. Fisk. Kingpin asks what his name is. Samuel answers, Samuel, I used to collect for you through Waldo Dini. Typhoid Mary asks, can I make him burn? Kingpin answers, no. He tells Samuel, Samuel, I leave it to you to put the word on the street. Tell them I'll be at Josie's bar in the back after 10 p.m. tomorrow. Samuel will do just that. The next night in this Josie's bar, some of the people who used to work for the Kingpin and then worked for the Owl are now coming to pay their respects to the Kingpin who seems to be coming back. One of these men tells Kingpin, Well, I just want you to know that everyone I know was never into the deal with the Owl. It was kind of just forced upon us, you know? I couldn't believe what a mess he made of things so fast. I mean, for all the strong armoring he did to get the neighborhood, I mean, what was the point if he was just going to run at it into the ground? Anyway, what I got here is a small token of my appreciation. All the money and protection you gave us over the years, well, I wanted you to know that if you do get back into it, you can count on my support and my business. Kingpin tells this man, Thank you. As they are discussing, Harold Driver, the FBI agent, arrives in this bar. He overheard the tail end of their conversation, and he warns Wilson, I hope you plan on declaring that on your federal income tax, Fisk. I'd hate to do something as lame as pull a Capone on you. Kingpin greets this FBI agent. Harold the driver tells Fisk, I just came down to see the new you. Introduce myself. See what you're up to. You know, it's fascinating. I always wondered what a man who lost everything looked like. Now I know. Let's see. You lost a multi-million dollar empire? Lost your son? Your wife? Your home? Why don't you just cut your losses, go down to a tropical island, and I don't know, blow your brains out? Kingpin pulls a small cassette out of his coat pocket. He gives it to Harold Driver. He tells him, Recently you raided a nightclub that the Owl was running. Well, he also had an office down at the pier, and at this office, he set up surveillance equipment in an attempt to catch Matt Murdock dressed in his daredevil outfit, doing something your agents would be able to pinch him for. We imagine that he was never able to get anything on daredevil, but what he did get is very clear footage of his own incriminating meetings with a half a dozen drug dealers, known drug dealers that worked in this city. This puts the owl away for good. This is for you. Consider it a gift from a concerned citizen. As the Kingpin and Harold the Driver and his FBI agents talk further, all of a sudden, 
a gangster named Turk storms into that bar. Turk hates the Kingpin, and he's planning on killing him. He tells the Kingpin, It's Turk! I'm Turk! You probably don't recognize me, because I'm usually the thing you're wiping your fat ass with. Well, guess what? Guess what, Chubsy Wubsy? Turk's the one that's got the guts that no one else in this entire place got the guts to do. I'm gonna whack you, like I should've done years ago. I'm gonna make my name, and nobody here is gonna... This guy that is trying to kill the Kingpin didn't realize there was several FBI agents in the room. All of a sudden, the FBI agents point their guns to Turk and tell him, Freeze! FBI! Turk can't believe it. He says, Oh man, are you serious? But I didn't do anything. Tell me what I did. Kingpin tells Harold the driver, Thank you for that. Harold warns Kingpin, We're gonna get you, Fisk. Fisk answers, Better men than you have died trying. Once everyone clears out, Kingpin tells Typhoid Mary that, That distraction we talked about, I think we'll need it sooner than I thought. That distraction he wanted was Typhoid Mary attacking Matt Murdock and making him go up in flames. So now we will be picking up where we left off last issue with Mary setting Matt aflame. Daredevil issue 48, Hardcore part 3 of 5. Matt is on fire, his skin is burning, his hair is singeing. Jessica Jones grabs Mila and brings her somewhere safe off to the side. And then Jessica charges at Mary and tackles her. Matt is still trying to put out the flames. He is thinking to himself, this is it, the worst case scenario, this is my nightmare. Meanwhile, Jessica Jones feeds Mary a couple of punches to her face. Mary is bleeding, but she is laughing maniacally. Mary fights back and kicks Jessica onto a nearby taxicab. Meanwhile, Matt Murdock has managed to put out the flames. He goes to check on Mila. She is fine. He then turns his attention to Mary. Mary attacks him with flames again. Jessica Jones tries to attack Mary again, but Mary knocks her down. Mary raises her sword and is going to do a killing blow on Jessica, but Luke Cage arrives. Luke is only here because he was looking to take Jessica out to lunch. Mary stabs Luke Cage with her sword, but the sword breaks as Luke Cage's skin is unbreakable. Luke feeds Mary some punches, Jessica feeds Mary some punches, and Matt Murdock joins in too and does the knockout blow. In the aftermath, Mary was taken into custody and Matt Murdock returned to his home to heal. Mila is with Matt as well. While Matt and Mila are at Matt's home, they are visited by Harold Driver, the FBI agent. Harold Driver starts talking about Matt's confrontation with Typhoid Mary earlier. Harold believes that Typhoid Mary attacked Matt on orders from the Kingpin. Harold explains he went to talk to the Kingpin the night before, kind of a get out of town, this is your warning kind of thing, and Mary was there with him. So in a way, he kind of feels a little bit responsible for what happened to Matt and his friends earlier today. He feels that maybe he may have inadvertently provoked the Kingpin into doing something to distract all of them while he gets his ducks in a row. Harold eventually leaves Matt alone, and Matt talks with Mila a bit. Matt and Mila talk about the attack earlier. Mila is so thankful that Jessica Jones was there to help them. Mila feels some of the scars on Matt's body. Matt tells her where they all came from. This one was from Melvin Potter, the Gladiator. This bullet wound is from the Punisher. One particular scar is from the villain Bullseye. Matt explains he is a diseased, deluded, pathetic man who kills people for a living. I had gotten him put away, put in jail, and in return, he has murdered not one, but Two women I have loved in my life. Both died in my arms. Matt is referring to Karen Page, who died recently, and Electra, who died in the past. Although she came back to life, so I guess it kind of doesn't really count, but it sort of does. Mila asks Matt, where is he now? Matt answers, 
I don't know. He's out there. Somewhere. Matt is so sorry that he has sucked Mila into all of this danger recently. He says he can't for the life of him think of a reason why she'd want to stay here. Mila tells Matt, It's because I am quite fond of you. Across town, the hitman, Bullseye, is having a meeting with the Kingpin. Kingpin asks Bullseye, What can I do for you? Bullseye answers, Business is bad. I need work. No one's hiring freelance anymore. No one can pay my fee. I'm back to killing for fun again, and that's not good for anybody. I need goals. I'm goal-oriented. Kingpin replies, I'm not sure I can use you right now. Bullseye tells Kingpin, Look, I have a proposal. Hear me out. I think you have to deliver to your people something you never did before. Murdoch. Once and for all. You can't dangle his secret identity in front of him anymore. You have to whack him. End it. It's money in the bank. You have to put his head on a stick and carry it around the neighborhood. Declare it a new day. No more games. No dance. No tango. Just end it clean. It's your statement. Kingpin, he questions. And you? You're going to do this for me? Bullseye nods that he will. Daredevil issue 49, Hardcore part 4 of 5. It is 11.30 at night. Matt is in his Daredevil costume. When Mila asks where he is going, Matt explains that he has to stop the Kingpin. The murder of Yuri Rosenthal, that was the Kingpin. Typhoid Mary, that was also the Kingpin. It was all to distract him. It was all a means to keep him busy so the Kingpin can freely move about and get his house in order. Matt says he needs to stop the Kingpin before something worse happens. As Matt is about to head outside, Mila asks, Do you want me to leave? Matt answers, No, uh, I want you to stay or do whatever you want. You can stay here as long as you like. I'm not kicking you out, but I just have to do this. As Matt leaves, he tells her he wants to take her on a proper date sometime, but for now, good night. He'll be back as soon as he can. As Matt leaves, Mila relaxes in bed a bit. However, that relaxing is quickly cut short. Bullseye is in Matt's bedroom. He is standing at the foot of the bed in front of Mila. Bullseye says, And Christmas comes early. A blind girl? Is that what this is? Is that right? Wow, this is too good. This is very exciting. See, with the other two, I never really got to enjoy it. I never got to spend the time and savor the flavor. Oh, I know they did their job and all. I know I got under his skin, but it was always in the heat of something else. This, this is something to really enjoy. Mila starts crying as she realizes she is here with this killer, and there is not a damn thing she can do about it. Luckily though, Daredevil did not get that far yet, and he must have heard that Bullseye was in his home, so he returned. Daredevil returns back to his bedroom and starts beating up Bullseye. He yells, get out of my house, and he throws Bullseye out the window. Matt turns to Mila and says, Mila, call the police. Tell them anything you want. Daredevil then heads outside and continues fighting Bullseye. He kicks him in the face and savagely beats him some more. Bullseye throws some ninja stars at Daredevil. Daredevil uses his billy club to block it. Bullseye mocks Daredevil saying, Ha! Remember what happened last time I got my hands on your billy club? The last time he did so, he killed Karen Page with them. Matt continues sparring with Bullseye. He asks him, Why do you keep coming back here? Bullseye replies, Shut up, Murdoch! Daredevil really starts getting the upper hand in the fight. Daredevil tells Bullseye, You know, I went looking for you, Lester. Did you know that? A while back, I decided I was going to find you and kill you in your sleep. I was going to kill you and no one would know I did it. And in looking for you, I finally found out all about the big mystery that is you, your secret origin. And I know why it's a secret, 
It's pathetic. I know about your prostitute of a mommy, and how you didn't even know who your daddy is. I know what happened to you in high school, I know! And after finding out your entire pathetic, uninteresting story, I know why. I know why you keep coming around here, Lester. You keep coming around here because you want me to put you out of your misery. Because you don't have the guts to do it yourself. But I'm not gonna do it, you hear me? I'm not getting sucked into your nightmare because I just don't care. You hear me, Lester? I don't care about you. No one cares. You're an animal. Your mommy doesn't care. Your daddy doesn't care. No one cares if you live or die. You mean nothing. You are nothing. Daredevil savagely beats Bullseye. He then touches the tattoo on Bullseye's forehead and asks him, What is this, huh? What is this, a tattoo? On your head, you psycho? What is this supposed to be, your logo? Your super cool badass logo? Shut up, animal! Matt then with a rock stabs Bullseye in his forehead where his tattoo is. He cuts into his face. He tells Bullseye, I'll give you something to think about. This circle here is for Electra, and this is for Karen, and this center point right here is for when you finally realize that no one cares. I don't care about you, the Kingpin used you, you serve no purpose in this world, you mean nothing! And when you finally realize how pathetic and disgusting you really are, and you finally have the guts to do what you are begging me to do for you, when you finally have the guts to end your miserable existence, here, aim true, aim to kill. At that moment, FBI agent Harold Driver arrives behind Daredevil. Daredevil asks him, do I have to officially press charges or do you have enough on him to put him away without me on paper? Harold Driver asks, is this the real bullseye? Daredevil answers, yeah, this is the real one. This caller do you good with your boss? Harold Driver answers, yeah, he's number four on America's most wanted list. Daredevil tells Harold, well then, this is your uh, early birthday present. And I'm not getting you anything else. He's only number four? Daredevil leaves and returns to his apartment, to Mila, who is hiding in the closet. Daredevil tells Mila, Mila, it's me. It's over. Mila hugs Matt. She thanks him for saving her life once again. Daredevil issue 50, hardcore part five, of five. In an effort to reclaim his criminal empire, the Kingpin has orchestrated a series of killings. We see a body on a beach in Atlantic City, a body in a dumpster in Chinatown, a man shot in the head in an office building on Wall Street, a body at a broken car lot in New Jersey. Sammy Silk's body in Montgomery, Pennsylvania Penitentiary. Another body in Harlem, another one in Philadelphia. In Brooklyn, a storefront is set up in flames. Finally, in Hell's Kitchen, the Kingpin is having a meeting with the heads of various crime families. He tells them all, So, do I have your attention? Effective immediately, I am retaking control of my territories. I am back in business. The terms remain as before my absence, but punishment for disobedience will be much more severe and handled much more swiftly. I want to make it perfectly clear that your behavior in my absence was disgusting. Payments for monies past due will be expected shortly. One of the crime bosses says, Mr. Fisk, you have to understand, we were left without clear leadership, without answers, without... Fisk cuts the man off and says, Are you under the impression that we are having a conversation? Fisk continues. He tells them that this drug, MGH, mutant growth hormone, is off limits now. It's off the street, it's stupid, and it's gone. Genetic mutation drugs are incredibly bad business. Anyone caught dealing it will disappear. Details on the rest of my new arrangements will be made shortly. Now, get out of my sight. 
One of the crime bosses does not like this arrangement, and he is not going to accept it. He tells Fisk you're insane, and one of us is going to kill you in your sleep before the weekend is over. You had the entire city, you had Daredevil half in your pocket, and you screwed it up. The arrogance of you! We're supposed to cower in fear because you whacked a half a dozen low-level jackos? They were garbage! Easy targets. I'm telling you man-to-man -man out of a courtesy because of all the money we made that thing that time. Get out of the country tonight, or by Sunday, or one, or all of us are going to have you whacked, okay? The Kingpin makes an example of this man. He pulls out his cell phone. He phones one of his lieutenants. Kingpin tells the man on the cell phone, Chinatown, do it. Kingpin then hangs up. The Chinatown crime leader asks, do what? Kingpin answers the man, I just ordered the rape and murder of your wife, Ming. Anyone else have a grandstand in them? Kingpin seems to have successfully made his point. The other crime bosses seem to have no choice but to fall in line and accept the Kingpin as their boss again. However, this meeting gets interrupted by Daredevil. Daredevil driving a car smashes it through the warehouse where this meeting is taking place. The car smashing into the building caused all sorts of support structures to fall down. The Kingpin, he eventually gets up. He is flustered. He sees Daredevil in front of him. Kingpin tells Daredevil, Hmm, I thought that the combination of the police, Typhoid Mary, and Bullseye in such a short period of time might do the trick. I thought at least it would keep you off your game. Daredevil answers, And I thought your crew stabbing you into a coma your son betraying you, and your wife selling you out would have done the trick. Guess we never did get the hang of each other, did we? Kingpin replies, I missed you, Matthew. I did. I almost called you. You made the papers all the way in Sweden when the tabloids outed you. I almost called and read it to you. It was very funny the way they worded it. It was one of the first things I saw with my own eyes after my reconstructive surgery. So there we go, we finally have an explanation for how the Kingpin has his eyesight back. He had reconstructive surgery while he was over there in Europe, recovering. Kingpin continues, I knew you would dodge it, I knew it. That's why I never outed you myself. I knew the threat was always stronger than the reality of it. I knew you'd spin it around somehow, deny it, with the sheer force of will? I knew it. But I wonder. I wonder what the dynamic of our relationship will be now that you're a public figure. I wonder how we'll work with all this change. Daredevil tells Fisk, No, Wilson, no. This is it. Right here. This is the end of the road for us. You're done. I'm sick of outwitting you. No more games. No more chessboard of life. Now I think... I'm just gonna beat the shit out of you. We now have a 10 page fight scene between Kingpin and Daredevil. Kingpin tries to punch Daredevil. Daredevil dodges, grabs Kingpin's arm, and tosses him aside. Kingpin punches Daredevil in the chest. Daredevil goes flying onto the roof of a car. Daredevil gets up. Kingpin tries to punch Daredevil some more. Daredevil feeds Kingpin a punch. The artwork then changes. We see various different art styles, perhaps some sort of celebration of the history of Daredevil and Kingpin throughout comic history. Kingpin wraps his hands around Daredevil's neck. He starts choking him. Daredevil counters with a double-fisted karate chop to the Kingpin's face. And then he manages to kick the Kingpin off of him. Daredevil then jumps on the Kingpin and starts feeding him many punches over and over and over again. The Kingpin won't stay down though, he gets up. He continues trying to strangle Daredevil. Daredevil kicks the Kingpin onto the roof of a car. Daredevil then starts driving that car. He drives it all the way to Josie's bar and smashes through the side of the building. Finally, it seems like Daredevil has won this fight. 
He gets out of the car. The kingpin is lying on the ground. Many of the thugs in Josie's bar are surrounding him. Daredevil tells the crowd, Listen, and listen good. These are the new rules of Hell's Kitchen. This is the kingpin. Your kingpin. This is Wilson Fisk. And I beat him with my bare hands. And this man is going to jail for the rest of his life. For the hell he has made of this city. And if I could do this to him? Imagine what I will do to you. Any of you. Daredevil then takes off his mask. He reveals to everyone that it is Matt Murdock. He continues. If from this second forward you sell your drugs, rob, or whore anywhere in my city. If you can't control yourselves. If you can't figure out a way to be productive in this life. Find somewhere else. Far from here. Far from here. I am here to say, if you people so badly need some sort of kingpin, someone to lord over you, well, from now on, it's me. I'm not protecting this city anymore. I'm running it. And I say, the people of Hell's Kitchen are my people. This is my territory now. And I say, get out or change tonight. You think you know me? You think you know who I am? These are the new rules. This is how it will be from now on. Spread the word. And if you think I'm kidding, look at the carcass in front of you. Look at him. And with this, we end the hardcore storyline. All right, so that was part three of my Bendis Daredevil coverage. Let me go through my thoughts. I think the relationship of Mila Donovan and Matt Murdock is pretty compelling. I'm liking seeing them date, and I want to see where their relationship goes. I thought the Owl story arc was kind of fun. Very street level, seeing the Owl trying to take over some territory. There were some funny moments. There was also some pretty good action in there. And in the end, the Owl loses. And, uh, you know, wrapped up nicely that storyline. Then we had the next story arc. We had Typhoid Mary coming into the mix. And there was some good moments there and battles there. But then we have the two moments where I think really uh, makes this particular volume that good. We had the Bullseye fight, which was great. You know, Bullseye is such a bastard to Daredevil. And to finally see Daredevil beat the shit out of Bullseye and tell him everything he's ever wanted to tell him. Saying to him like, screw you, your mommy and daddy didn't love you. Is that why you're so messed up? Is that why you're fucking with me? And just beating the shit out of him and um, leaving him to the cops to be arrested was great. And then we have the final issue with the Kingpin, which is so good. Firstly, I love just watching the Kingpin be a badass. He is uh, systematically killing a lot of his mafia competitors and making them bow down to him and accept him as the Kingpin once again. So that was some great badass stuff. But then, the Kingpin's plans get ruined by Daredevil. That attacks the Kingpin, and then we have this brutal fight between the two of them, which goes on for ten pages of just them fighting. And then, the final moments are so epic, where Daredevil has finally beat the shit out of Kingpin, Kingpin's lying on the ground, and then, when Daredevil removes his mask, revealing himself as Matt Murdock, to all these people, and he's like, I'm the kingpin now. <laughs> Bow down to me. I own Hell's Kitchen. Uh, you all have to answer to me now. Oh my god. How epic was that? Such a status quo shift, and uh, just one of the greatest, most satisfying moments I think I've ever read in a Daredevil book so far. So uh, yeah, amazing stuff. Absolutely loved it. <laughs> all right. I'm going to give this volume a 9.5 out of 10. Uh, there's a couple issues in here I'd probably give a perfect score to. Although, uh, on the whole, I don't think it was maybe perfect, but still, 9.5 out of 10 is a pretty good score. This was an amazing uh, set of story arcs. Thank you all for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and I will see you all again in the future, continuing this Daredevil run. Mm -hmm.